Love Truth presents the Parent and Family Resource. This is a question and answer about feeling emotion. Aloisa discusses feeling emotion, being humble, and how parents' attitudes towards emotion affect children's beliefs and self-confidence, or lack of it, to feel their own emotion. Presented on the 21st of July 2021 from 9am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello and welcome to the Parent and Family Resource. I'm Eloisa. Firstly, thank you to those of you who have sent in questions to the FAQ or office email addresses. I've really enjoyed reading your emails and your response to listening to some of these parenting videos and also um, the questions that you've asked and thinking about how to apply principles of divine truth to you at your, what you're asking. So as a reminder, this parent and family resource is based on the teachings of divine truth as taught by Jesus and Mary Magdalene, also known as AJ Miller and Mary Luck, and more information can be found at www.divinetruth.com. I'm taking principles as taught by Jesus and Mary and applying them to parenting and also to partner relationships and any, real rela any, and any relationships. The questions that you have sent through, I'm going to do some question and answer presentations and I will take the questions you have asked and because I don't know you personally and everyone's going to have a unique situation, but some people may have some similar feelings to what has been asked via their email correspondence and so I'm going to apply principles and give suggestions of self-reflection questions. So no matter who you are or what your situation is, that you'll be able to apply those to your own unique situation and try and find the cause of what's creating the effects in your family and the behaviours or the uh, lack of relationships or the issues that you're feeling in relationships. And I'm going to use the principles in order that you can do an investigation and start experimenting in your own family. So once you've watched this presentation, you should have at least some idea or tools. Hopefully it spurs in you um, an openness to investigate further your own personal situation to find out. When questions are sent through, I don't have the condition to feel your exact situation and many of you have never met in my life before, so I don't know your specific unique context or situation or the dynamics that have happened. So in answering your questions, I'll be applying principles and self-reflection questions that you can then investigate your specific situation and hopefully find out what's causing all of these effects or the behaviours or the situation that you, you're currently in to happen. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will have some, um, some tools that you can use to start and investigate about what is happening in your family and to try and resolve those issues that you've sent through via the questions in order that you can start to resolve those or at least make some inroads into finding out and figuring out what's causing them. The theme of this first question and answer is emotion and feeling emotion. I have done a previous presentation on a brief introduction to emotion and there will be more presentations, uh, general presentations that I plan to create around emotion as emotion is one of the most important things in order to change a relationship with. Currently in the world there's a lot of negative feelings towards emotion and, and in general most people are trying to suppress or squash or shut down emotions which is very damaging to ourselves and also to the children in our care if we are a parent. The human soul is made to be emotional and to express emotion and that is the way that we express ourselves, connect to ourselves, it's the way that God has created to communicate directly with God is via emotion. We are made to be 100% emotional, to express ourselves via emotion. When we shut down our emotion, when we suppress emotion, that causes a lot of on-flow effects, that cause a lot of problems and damage in our lives. So the suppression of emotion is what causes all illness in life. The suppression of emotion is what causes us to feel disconnected from others. The suppression of emotion causes depression. It also causes us to, um, when we want to get away from our own feelings and our own experiences and our own emotions, that causes us then to become quite spirit influenced at times. 
if we're giving, if we don't want to actually connect to the feelings that we have. Not feeling emotion, a result of that is that we create addictions on top of that in order to avoid certain feelings or to get certain feelings. So our avoidance of feeling emotion causes a lot of pain and suffering in the world. When you connect to emotion and you actually feel your emotion and you are your emotional self, which is a way of living and it's a way of being and it's the goal of what you want to become is 100% emotional all of the time. It's not just I'm going to feel some emotion and then I'm going to be all good and it's all not going to happen anymore. No, emotion is something that you want to change your relationship to so that you become to love emotion and enjoy feeling and enjoy feeling emotion and being emotional and expressing yourself in an emotional manner. Um, it brings so much happiness and joy to express yourself. And it's lovely on the receiving end of others when they are expressing themselves as well. If we look at little children, they are already perfected <laughs> in feeling emotion and expressing themselves via emotion. It's the only way they have to communicate. You know, they cry when something's wrong. There's a different cry when they're hungry. There's a different cry when they're uncomfortable and they might need a nappy change. There's other cries for when they're really, really angry. There's cries when they're sad. There's cries when they're reflecting mum and dad's anger or sadness or fear or shame. And if you've had a child or you're going to have a child, you'll come to see that a little, an infant, a tiny little baby is already expressing themselves if they're allowed to. Often parents are so concerned about suppressing their own emotion that they end up then suppressing the emotion in the child. And this is a very damaging thing to do to children. As adults, when we suppress the emotion in ourselves, there's an automatic feeling going out to the children in our care and to anyone else in our environment of like, do not feel emotion. Don't, don't feel anything that's going to make me feel uncomfortable. So we become quite selfish in this place and we become quite self-absorbed and we end up trying to suppress others' emotions. And there's so many ways that we do this. We soothe, we feed. If you have a little tiny baby, often you try and feed them because you're trying to avoid your emotion. So you might feed them or you'll soothe them or you'll shush them or you'll rock them or you might get angry at them or you might you know, get very upset at them and like even punish them for feeling emotion. If we have some humility, we can actually sit back as a parent and go, hold on, how do I feel when my child is expressing um, their emotion? How do I feel when a child is just crying and crying and crying? What are the feelings that come up for me? You know, do I feel helpless? Do I feel hopeless? Do I start to feel really angry? And if we're a self-responsible parent we can, or person, you can go away because sometimes you might be in an environment where you're not the parent, but you're an adult in that situation and you still have these same feelings and you want to shush someone up or you want to make the child stop. I've seen it happen in the supermarket. I've seen it happen in all kinds of situations where strangers go up and try and stop the child feeling the emotion. That's the law of attraction for both the parent and, you know, and for the person who's trying to shut the child down is both of them have some feelings about emotion to work out. And if we loved, we'd allow a child to feel emotion. Why is it good to let children feel emotion? Because if you shut their emotion down, anytime you shut an emotion down in a child, whatever method you use as an adult, that emotion is then stored in the child. It's like frozen, if you like, inside of their soul. And at some point, that emotion needs to come out if they're going to grow and develop and actually um, make ch positive changes in their life and make soul-based change, they will have to go through a process to release the emotion. So if you can get into the space where you are absolutely fine with your own emotions and you don't judge emotion and you don't, and you don't want to shut emotion down and you lo love emotion and you enjoy feeling your own emotion, even when there's hard emotions, it doesn't feel great in the moment. Like if you're feeling terrified, you feel terrified. That feels very real in the moment. And we need to express that. When you feel sad and grief-stricken, you feel super sad and grief-stricken. But if you can get to the place where you enjoy feeling your emotion, because always afterwards it feels better, even if in the moment it might feel all kinds of, of tumultuous, overwhelming experiences. And we if we can get used to allowing that overwhelming feeling and allow all of the 
just the expression of whatever emotion we have in us, then that will actually open a space for children to be able to feel as well. And, you know, as I was saying, why is it good for children to feel emotion? Well, it doesn't get... It, if a parent loves and, and has a space where they are comfortable with their own emotions and with others feeling emotion, then what that allows is children now have choices and children now can just express themselves. They can, they, it will help them to be themselves. Emotion won't get stored within them because they'll feel it, they'll release it, and then they'll move on. And if you watch a very, very small child, they'll be going about their daily life. They might get really frustrated because they, you know, think of a toddler here. They can't do something, so they get really frustrated. They have a bit of a tantrum. They chuck it all around. They feel their emotion. They're not thinking about it. They just express it. They let it out. They do it. And if you leave them to do it, what you'll notice is that, and you ha if you haven't already created uh, set up dynamics where you fill in spaces or you try and correct things for me, but if you just let a child go through their emotion, they'll just go through it. They will feel what they feel. So this example of the little toddler wandering around, getting very frustrated because they can't do something, they'll go through that frustration and they need to. That's part of learning. We hit up on places where we feel frustrated because we can't do something. And we need to feel that frustration because then if you notice a child, they'll often then probably have a cry about it. And that's like releasing certain feelings. And then they'll try again and often you'll be able to do it. And I've even found that in my own life as an adult. Often I'll get so frustrated that I can't do something. If I allow the, the feelings and feel my frustration, often I'll then I'll end up having a, you know, a bit of a cry. And when I say a cry, sometimes it's grief. Sometimes it's just crying and frustration and rage that I can't do it. But there's always something that I'm finding as I'm an adult underneath that. And often then I'll have a, a, like some grief to feel about you know, why I feel I can't do it or what's stopping me from, from doing it or that I think it should be easy. So you know, my addictions are exposed or so many different things can be exposed for anyone. And if you allow the feeling process, you will find out what is driving your frustration in the end, in this example. But if you allow that process to happen and you just remember, no, when we get frustrated or whatever, that's just an indicator that there's some, some things to feel. And if we feel through that, often you'll find that you have new insights, new thoughts, or you'll be able to do something more easily. It might not be easier, literally, but your emotions won't prevent you from giving it a go and you may get inspiration or just have like remember certain things and be more open to actually making something easier. Um, I'm talking say about like for example I was fixing a water pump one time and I couldn't open the the sockets that that connect the water pipe and I was just so upset and <laughs> so angry and went through that feeling process and realized that I had a lot of demands on men because I thought that they should do the hard things and also about feeling that I'm very weak and I'm not very strong physically. And it was just really interesting. After I'd had a bit of a cry and a sob, it ended up that I was able to, to work out how to open the socket and everything sort of worked out and I was able to do it. But the feelings in me before that just sort of prevented me from doing it. I just really wanted to give up and I didn't want to do it. I feel as a little girl that I would have had times where I felt very frustrated because I couldn't do something and I wasn't actually allowed to have the feelings to work out and then to do it. And there's areas in my life where I feel very like that I'm incapable and I can't do it and I need a man to help me, which indicates to me that at some point in my past that um, there was a belief instilled in me that as a woman I can't do certain things and I need a man to do certain things. Now I'm doing this as an adult, but if a child, if you've got a little girl, for instance, you know, and she let her have her struggles, let her do it, and only when she asks for help you know, then you can help her, but rather than doing it for her, help her to work out how she can do it herself. And the same goes if you've got sons or a little boy, let them do things, let them come up against it, let them have their feelings and work through those. And when I say work through, basically it's just feeling them. So it's not any work involved. It's just allowing the feeling and the expression of whatever they feel. But for a child to be able to do that, we as the parents and the adults must change our relationship to emotion. From my own experience, when the children were small, any emotion that I had that I was trying to suppress or shut down, that actually prevented, there was like a, a barrier 
to the children feeling that, or they might be able to feel a little bit of it because they were more humble, meaning that they were more open to feeling and expressing whatever they felt and thought. But as they grew, my, the barrier in me made it less and less um, easy for them to feel. And it shut down their emotions, which was very damaging for them. It also caused them to believe that they couldn't handle their emotions, they weren't going to be able to cope, that they weren't going to be able to feel. And this is all false beliefs and lies, literally lies that we are teaching children if we have those feelings in us. And remember from previous videos, I've said that what is in your soul and your real, true, soul-based beliefs is what happens in the family. So you might say, oh, it's okay for my child to feel emotion. I'm okay with emotion. But if in your soul you actually feel like it's not, and if you're not expressing your emotion in a self-responsible manner, that's not taking it out on your partner or on your children or on every, anyone else in your environment, that's you working through, like that's you feeling your emotion on your own in a, in a way that is not harming others. If you're not doing that and you don't feel all your emotions all of the time and, and allow that process, then there's going to be areas that you're going to shut your children down. I suggest that for different genders, you're going to have different allowances. That I suggest for different ages in children, you're going to have different allowances under different circumstances, depending what gets triggered in you. And mainly, sadly, I feel like that's the main thing in parents is that something in them is exposed. They don't want to feel it, so they shut the child down. Rather than just removing themselves and dealing with the fact of like, wow, I feel so uncomfortable when my child feels sad, or I feel so uncomfortable when my child is angry. Oh, wow, I want to shut my child down when they are, you know, being super expressive and happy and, you know, playing and stuff. I want to shut that down. And some people do, sadly, because of um, harm, pains that they have inside of themselves. So emotion is so important to feel and so important not to suppress in children because if you suppress it in a child, they're going to grow up like us and going to need to feel it at some point in their lives when they're older. And it's harder because as we get older, we find more addictive ways and more, we just basically add layers, I suppose, on top, like more and more and more and more suppression techniques. It's not hard to feel emotion because we were made, we were designed to feel emotion and be emotionally expressive. We were designed. That's how we're already communicating, which sometimes I think is uh, quite amazing <laughs> with how shut down we get in the world. And when I say shut down in the world, it's not an external thing. At first, when we're ch children, the external environment is shutting us down. As we become an adult, we make the choice to remain in that place. So there's twofold. There's what happened to us and when we were children, and then there is what um, we choose to do as we get older and the choices are really what the important part because what is done to us in the end I'm discovering it's the smallest part of the sin that I've created meaning uh, the sin meaning not being in harmony with God's love or God's truth on any matter and in the end it's my choices that are the most damaging and it's my choices that cause me to remain stunted emotionally. It's my choices that cause me to remain shut down emotionally. It's also my choices that allow me to open up and be emotional and to be humble. And humility is so important for any progression to happen, for any soul-based change to happen, for anything in your family dynamic to change, you're going to need to develop the quality of humility. So as a reminder, we talked about a number of qualities in previous videos. We talked about humility, faith, um, love, truth. And those are the four primary qualities. So love, truth, faith, and humility. I also touched on action and self-responsibility and some other qualities to develop as well. But those four primary ones, love, truth, faith, and um, humility, all things seem to lead back to those four qualities. If you can develop those four qualities, and they all work together in order that you can grow and progress and become more self-aware. And if you can develop your desire to be humble, develop your desire for truth, develop your desire to want to love yourself and others and God and the environment, if you develop the desire for truth on every subject, 
And by doing that and have some faith that it's possible to make soul-based emo- like emotional change, have some faith that your life is going to get better. At the very beginning, that is, a, I suppose, a, a leap of faith because you don't know it's going to totally work. Faith, as you, you only have faith in a possibility that it might, it might. And so that's at the very beginning. But as you take actions and you work in harmony with God's laws and you actually work through emotion and you express and feel through your emotional injuries that you've inherited or that you've absorbed as a child and then all the things you've done and acted upon those to continue those injuries, as you actually deconstruct all of that by feeling and allowing the emotions that happen to you as a tiny, like as a little child, to come out of you, then your faith actually increases naturally as long as you measure and start noticing all of the positive things that happen because you can dismiss those too for various reasons. So emotion and coming to, I suppose, love the overwhelming feeling and to love and enjoy a feeling emotion, there comes a point at first where it feels quite a struggle at times and it seems to me from my observations that most people, it's the area that is the people are the most shut down to. It's the area they're most resistant to, meaning that it's the area they don't want to do. It's the area they want, you know, their addictions. And, and that stage of working through to come to love and express your emotion and feel emotion, just to allow your emotional expression under all circumstances, under every, you know, all the time, that's some, uh, a process that you need to go through in order to basically find out who you are and and your emotional self and how you really feel and what actually happened to you because it's via the expression and feeling of emotion that you find truth it's via feeling emotion and allowing the emotional process that you become more logical actually and it's via feeling emotion that truth is exposed one of what has happened to you but also it's an emotional process to receive new truth from god so emotions are vital and in our world, a, I feel there's an absolute terrible relationship to emotions and terrible attitude towards emotion. And I would love, I would love to see us stop shutting children down particularly, but also stop shutting each other down, stop the judgment and resistances and the soothing and the suppression or using pull downs or just our whole belief systems around emotion need to be deconstructed. In some recent conversations with Jesus, he's been speaking about how we will need to go through the process of releasing emotion as a child would. So whenever that emotion gets stored in us, whether we are one, like zero, you know, just born or even in the womb to one, two, three, four, five, you know, and as tiny children, that's how we will need to release the emotion too, because when the emotion went into us and is stored or frozen within us, that's the age that we'll need to feel it. So as adults, that can feel quite confronting because we think we've grown up, but really emotionally, we're like a small child. And so we're acting out of our emotions like a small child. And when Jesus was talking about that, it really made sense to me. In a relationship, I've had experience and I observe this in relationships, that a couple starts fighting and they're like little kids. It's like, well, no, you're, you've hurt me. No, you've done the wrong thing. It's like they're just bickering and fighting and, and neither of party after a while, if this happened to me personally, had fights with my ex-husband and we fought and fought and fought. And at the end, I'm like, what were we even fighting about? And when I've gone away and reflected about it, it wasn't the thing that we were fighting about. It was that certain feelings in me had come up and I was acting those out, if you like, like a little child. Certain feelings in him had been exposed and he was acting those out. And we were just basically having this like, you know, three-year-old fight where we were just, that's kind of how we were. The problem is, is that when we, we weren't humble in those situations, so instead of going away, feeling our emotions, like working through the grief or the sadness that we had, and then coming back and actually discussing and working through the issue that was unresolved because whatever had triggered those feelings, there was probably an issue in our, in our relationship that would have been good to find the truth on and to actually grow in love about. But when you are just acting out of your emotions, and that's what children do. If you look at, at small children, they're not thinking. 
they're not intellectually analyzing and that they're just feeling and they're just responding and they just do and that happens like even as a preteens and teenager and they are still doing that they don't understand often why they're having the response they do they just have this response and that's because in them as well certain emotions were locked up as children and now they just like blurk out when the situation is perfect to do so and because they are becoming sort of more open to just letting themselves feel how they feel, often people may find that quite uncomfortable. I see it as an opportunity. I see it as like, oh, wow, okay, this, this is happening now in our family. Right, what's, what's it indicating? What's it trying to show or expose in our family? What's really going on here? And so instead of being caught up in the children's response or my partner's response or my own response, it's like I just let them feel that and, I let, and, I, and for myself I go off and I feel my response, my initial response, feel it. Once I felt through that, often I get down underneath and there's often grief or fears or other emotions than say angry or my initial sort of rigid response. And those feelings underneath, if, um, in my experience, if I feel those, then I often gain more insights into what's really going on and what I really feel and what I'm really responding to and the real pain, I suppose, that's in me that I have grief to feel about. And if I can feel through that, it actually helps me to then be more, it helps me to be less judgmental or less concerned. It's like I know that I'll figure it out eventually and that instead of sort of judging or trying to shut down the initial response, it's like, no, we need to have that. So often now I'll remove myself from situations or that response might come up in a situation and um, I'll go home and I'll feel about it. And with the children, I just encourage them and say, all right, well, why don't you feel your feelings or have it out, you know, say whatever you want to say and we'll have a discussion about this afterwards. And once they do that, it's like once that initial feeling sort of is is blurted out if you like then and that you know that can be that's a period of time it's not so like one minute and it's done sometimes it takes quite a while sometimes there's a few days where someone will stay in that state and depending on their a level of humility like people can stay for years in a really resistive cranky space you know sulking or cranky or whatever years it's a waste of life I reckon so like if you just felt how sulky and cranky you feel and figured out what you got out of that and actually felt what was really underneath it, what created you to actually do those responses. You know, what's the real cause? Not, you know, sulking and all this like sort of angry responses. They're just effects of deeper emotion. And this is something to grow and learn about in yourself. And the more that you heal in yourself, the more emotion that you release, the more that you become uh, okay with others feeling emotion, the more you, co which comes as a natural result of you feeling comfortable feeling your own emotion. And when I say comfortable, emotion doesn't always feel comfortable, but the process of, like you, you have faith in the process that, all right, if I work through this emotion, then probably something better is going to come or I'm going to find more truth or at least understand the situation better. And those things now for me, it's like even when I hit up against a, a feeling or an emotional experience that I find very challenging, I know that if I work through it, I have faith that if I work through it, that I will gain more understanding and more knowledge and I will be happier and I will have more understanding of myself and my situation and why things have happened. And what I've found is the more work that I do on myself as the parent, the more it allows and opens the opportunity for the children to be more emotionally expressive, for the children to actually voice their own opinions and their own feelings. And I was talking to one of our sons this morning and I was saying, oh, you know, we're talking about responsibility and also about emotion and things like that. And I said, how does it feel different now than it used to? And he said, I don't feel so restricted. I feel like I can do more. When you had, you know, he said, you know, me, m Aloisa had, when I wasn't open to my own emotions, when I had all of my other fears, when I was not allowing them to be responsible, as an example, they felt sort of restricted and they couldn't do anything. And he, and he said, oh, well, now I feel like I'm free. <laughs> I can make my own decisions. I can choose what I want to do. And I don't have to do what you think I should do. And I don't have to 
to do this. And I thought that was a really lovely comment and illustrates how as parents, when we have certain beliefs and feelings and we're imposing those on the child, and that just happens if we haven't dealt with our own emotional injuries and our own belief systems and our own addictions and ways of doing things. We're going to just act out of those without even thinking, sometimes without even being you know, intellectually conscious that we're doing that. And so this process is to become more aware and self-aware of ourselves. But emotion is so important and vital for us to feel. And, and as parents, if we can let children express their emotions and not shut them down, that is a wonderful thing like, to, to do for a child because then they will come to understand that they can cope with emotion, that they can be responsible for their own emotions, they don't need anyone else, they naturally can just do it. And if they, you know, if we can also educate children that they can have a relationship with God and that they can seek truth via the conscience, which is the direct truth channel, as I call it, between you and God, and you can have a longing and receive information, like truth and love also, you know, from God. Uh, love actually comes through the Holy Spirit. It's a different conduit, and I haven't talked about that yet. But the conscience, you can get truth and you can find out information and you can get answers as long as you're open emotionally. So also, so many things could be prevented, diseases and illnesses and accidents, um, you know, suicides, all could be prevented if we changed our relationship with emotion. Depression could be completely avoided. Depression is a su total suppression of emotion or the attempt to totally suppress emotion because I'm not sure you can completely suppress emotion. There's always going to be something in there. But when I say that, depression is the attempt to completely suppress yourself emotionally. And that is a very dangerous place to be because then you're not connected to yourself, you're not feeling what's happening around you, uh, you don't get to enjoy life or to discover yourself or to feel others. Your entire worldview and concept is totally clouded because you're no longer able, you're, you're no longer feeling what's really going on. You can't get inspiration or you're very open to dark spirits who want to interfere in your life. And you allow that, you, you even sometimes, like people in that state often even want that because they don't want to take responsibility for their own emotional state. And this is a, a damaging place for us to go. If every, imagine for a moment if the entire world was completely okay and open with emotion. You know, no one had a problem with emotion. Wow, what a place that would be. You know, when you were sad, you'd cry. When you were angry, you'd go and have a rage. But if we, and I'm saying here, self-responsible about emotion. We may even have like, uh, <laughs> you know, areas that you could go and feel, you know, uh, where you could take yourself off and actually feel it. You know, you go imagine going to the mall and there's certain areas that you know you feel really angry, so you can go off to the, you know, uh, sort of a, a little contained room, if you like, and you're on your own and you can have a good bash. Maybe there's a punching bag in there or something that you can, you know, like um, hit or, or do and you just, it was just like part of everyday life. How, I just think it'd be wonderful. You know, you'd have people like expressing themselves and feeling and I, I do, I, I have a feeling that it would be a very freeing and also you'd get to know people a lot faster and a lot better and, and you'd feel closer, I feel, to people because you'd know what they're really like. But due to the collective feeling in, in most people and being quite afraid of particularly a very um, powerful emotions. And also I feel there's this fear in people of acting on their dark emotions. So they try and suppress them and rein them in. And sadly, if you're trying to suppress one area of yourself, you're suppressing all areas of yourself. So you can't suppress, say, the dark emotions like your fears and anger and shame and all of these. You can't suppress those and then expect to be happy and joyous and feel good. You can't. It's by working through all of the dark emotions but not acting on them. So when I say dark emotions, some people have some very dark emotions. Some people feel that they want to murder other people. Some people feel so angry that they want to mur you know, murder or harm themselves. And those emotions 
need to be felt. They must be released because they're in, you know, they're in us. They must come out, but not act on them. So don't go and kill another person, but work out the reasons why you want to, why you feel that feeling, if you have that feeling. There's other emotions, maybe, you know, some people have feelings that they just want other, you know, to control other people. And that's a dark emotion. They control and feel superior and have someone do what they want. Those are dark emotions. And if you've got those emotions, don't act on them, but feel why you want them. Feel why you feel you're allowed to do that or you feel entitled to do that. Other people have other emotions such as they feel terrible about themselves and they feel like inferior. That's also an emotion that causes a lot of, like if there wasn't, if people didn't feel inferior and they didn't accept that state, and they actually worked through it and didn't act on it, then you wouldn't have inferiority and superiority because there'd be no room for it. You can only have that dynamic while there's an agreement between someone who feels inferior and someone who feels superior. So if there was actually a feeling of equality, or there was at least a desire um, for equality in both parties, and if you think about it, if, if you, both parties didn't act on those feelings. So someone may have superior feelings and someone may have inferior feelings, but they didn't act on them. So they said, no, we know that we've got those. And the superior person said, every time, so the inferior person wanted to make them feel better or whatever, said, no, no, now you're trying to make me feel better. This is not good, you know. No, this is not love. We can't do this. Like, yes, I desperately want that. I've got to go feel that. Go feel that. You know, but you, you doing that, that's not loving to me and that's not loving to yourself. So we can't engage in this situation. And, you know, that inferior person, you know, the person who has those emotions would be probably quite shocked and be like, what? Like, hold on, hold on, what's going on here? But also they might would be able to explore further about do they really feel inferior? Um, they have a feeling like they are less than others? Or is it that they just have a lot of fears and they're using inferiority as a way to avoid some of their fears about, about certain interactions? or many other different emotions could be depending on the unique situation that, that you're in. My point is though, is that if we don't act on the unloving emotions, then we have a chance to actually heal. And if there's two parties in a relationship not acting on them, two parties who are, as we've said in part, previous videos, seeking God's truth, God's opinion, um, God's love on, on the issue at hand, so you feel what you feel. So in the case of the superior, inferior example, this person, you know, is like, all right, I know I have this injury. I know I have this feeling. I know I want to dominate and control and feel better than you and pull you down to make you do that. But I'm not going to take those actions. I'm just going to feel how much I want to. And they're working through that. And the inferior person's like, man, I so badly want to make that person feel better and pull myself down and accept all of these unloving things towards myself. Oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. But no, hold on. I know that's not right from God's perspective. I need to feel about why I want to do that and what's caused me to feel this way, but I'm not going to act on it. Well, wow. Like that would, you'd need to be exceptionally humble to do that, I feel, and really have a desire for God's truth and to understand the reasons of what's going on. And also a real desire to love the other person. And also desire to know yourself and to know the other person. But all of those things um, build and create beautiful relationships. And they are qualities I feel to develop and they are things to aspire to. And you're not going to be perfect at the beginning, you're not. You need to see where you're at and be honest about that. But there is a potential and that's where you could head. But if you're unwilling to feel emotion, it's not going to uh, work out well because all of the reasons of feeling superior or feeling inferior are about emotional, you know, emotions that have been created as children that are stored inside of you. And they are things that you need to work through. And as children, we reflect and we respond and we're just like little sponges absorbing, absorbing, absorbing whatever, whatever is in the environment. So if you had an environment that upheld love, truth, was humble, you know, loud emotion and encouraged emotion. I had a feeling that you could be self-responsible for both, you know, for your emotions, your physical needs, your sexual development, your, your spiritual development that encouraged you to have a relationship with God, that knew that you were quite capable, that didn't step in and do anything for you. 
They didn't have demands on you, allowed you to explore and experiment and be curious and explore your own environment. You'd grow up in that feeling that it was normal. You wouldn't get shut down. You, you would have a completely different experience. If you grew up in an environment where you're severely shut down, where emotion isn't allowed or only certain emotions are allowed, and if there's a condescending feeling towards emotion or there's a feeling you can't cope with feeling your own emotions or there's, oh gosh, there's just so many things, or there's violence in your family and if you feel emotion, you're violently punished. If you, you know, where mum and dad might be the rulers or dad is the ruler and the the superior person in your family and, you know, mum's subservient or maybe you've got a dominant mother and a subservient father. Like there's just so many different dynamics that could have happened. But if you grew up in a family with some of those dynamics, you'd think those were normal and that, you know, say if there was a, a dominant mother and a subservient father, you're going to think, well, you know, women, they dominate. Like that's absolutely fine. They should control and you'll have beliefs that support the fact that women can dominate men and that men should do what women want and you know men don't stand up to women and women being angry is sort of normal for you as a child and as you grow up older you'll either seek out you know similar situations or different situations or a combination of both in order that you can work through those emotions and if we can see that as the attraction or that everyone who we meet in future is like a trigger for us to work on our past and to heal what has happened to us in the past and to actually confront false beliefs that we have about love and truth, then we have an opportunity to grow. But while we hold on to those beliefs as real, while we hold on to um, our past experience as reality and that there's no possibility for a difference and change, we'll remain in that place and we'll act out of that place. Our whole life is dictated by our past until we actually work through it. The beauty of it is if you get to a point where you go, wow, I want to change something in my life and your motivations and your intentions are to aspire to love and to be truthful and to actually be humble and to find out the causes of why you are the way you are, then now you have an opportunity that your future will, or will be more in harmony with God's laws. So anything that happens in your future will be really good. But you have all of the baggage of the past that you're still going to need to work through and you're still going to need to emotionally deal with. You can't get away from that. You can't. You need to grieve and forgive what has been done to you and repent for and actually fully go through the process of feeling why you made the choices that you did and also feeling the pain that you've caused to others. That's part of the repentance process is that you will need to experience what you have done to others and how it has affected their lives and hurt them in, in various different ways. Again, that is an emotional process. You can't, you can't feel what someone else has been through if you're shut down to emotion. You can't feel what you've been through if you're shut down to emotion. You can't even understand another person if you're shut down to emotion. So we're having all these relationships you know, as adults, <laughs> but really we're the emotional state of a, chi of a child. If we're acting like children in a relationship, then you can see how as a, as a small child sort of grows and they've also been shut down in a, emotionally, so they've got, they're kind of acting emotionally as a small child as well. You can see that you don't really have an adult or a parent role now educating a child. You have two children. One just has a large adult body and one may be a, still a child or one gets to be a teenager. And I feel like this is why there's so much conflict between parents and children. And, you know, you can see as children get to be teenagers, you know, mothers and daughters and the fights and how terrible they are. You know, sometimes it's horrific, like quite abusive even. And that's because mum's not really emotionally developed to be an adult. And so is fighting with the daughter for whatever reasons. And this is a result of not dealing with your emotions not actually making soul-based change, not finding the cause of what's happening, just interacting with the effects and acting on your own emotion. Using the example of mothers and daughters, the same thing happens with sons and fathers. The dad can get very, very competitive with the son, might 
fight with the son, you know, may even when he's a small child dominate the son and be quite violent and abusive or pull him down in different ways. And then as the son grows older and often <laughs> sons get uh, stronger than their fathers and then they want to sort of have it out with their dads or show their dads that, you know, prove to their dad that they, they're not what their dad's sort of been telling them. But all of this is just from the pain of our childhood experience. And if we release the pain of our childhood experience, then we'd be able to see the world a lot more clearly and objectively rather than coming out of our filtered, injured emotional viewpoint, which is a very damaged way of looking at the world. So changing our relationship with emotion is a vital part of this resource and it's a vital part to your future happiness.